I'm going to do a real quick overview of the ECX switch and how the ECX switch processes frames from, from one side to the other, the A side to the Z side. Really important to understand how the ECX switch functions. If you really understand the ECX switch, I like to say, you know, it's kind of like the Big Mac. It's the number one thing on the menu. So once you understand how the ECX switch processes packets, a lot of other things start to fall into place. So we'll talk about the ECX switch in general. And then after that, we'll, we'll just hang the network edge device on, on the A side of the ECX switch so you can see how it, how it works. So uh, again, the, the network edge device is an extension of ECX. So being really grounded and having a good understanding of what ECX is, does, and how it processes frames will make uh, network edge very easy to, to understand and apply to it. So let's get started. So the ECX switch, if you take the ECX switch, and draw it out and then kind of split it uh, down the middle. Uh, and on this side is, is the A side, and this side being the Z side. And if you think of the Z side, every, everything that the A side does, it connects to a, a profile. So on the Z side is where all the service profiles live. And I like to think of the service profiles uh, also as a seller profile, kind of the same thing. So there's there's a buy side and a sell side. So buy side and then the, the, the seller side. So the, the buy side is going to initiate the connection. The, the A side is going to initiate the, the connection to the Z side. So the providers are on the exchange. They, they kind of live on the Z side. And then they create a service profile for A side users to connect to. So that's the way to think about it. I'm buying from the sellers. The sellers create a service profile. We call it a seller profile. And, and that's how I start establishing connectivity uh, across the ECX fabric. Um, so the, there, there are basically four scenarios in a physical world um, that, that you can apply to the ECX switch. So on the A side, it's uh, scenario one, we'll call it is dot one Q to dot one Q. And, and what that scenario is, is on the A side, which is back here, A side and Z side. On the A side, there's a dot one Q frame coming in. And on the Z side, there's a dot one Q frame coming in. So the same framing type, but what I wanna do is I wanna provide a mechanism to allow me to use my own VLAN constructs and not rely on the Z side VLAN constructs. So it could be a conflict, I may wanna use my own thing, not use theirs. So the VLAN constructs can be unique on both sides. And it's the job of the ECX switch to take those VLANs if they're different and, and just do a, a simple mapping to create the layer two underlay. So, so example, what that would look like, say on the Z side, I create a connection to, to AWS, Amazon Web Services. And on the A side, my connection is VLAN 100, for example. So when you create a connection to, uh, to AWS, you create a direct connect, part of that process is you go out and it's all programmatic. You, you'll create the connection request. It'll go out to AWS and AWS will just dynamically assign a VLAN to, uh, to create the connection. So let's just say they assign VLAN 382. So you want to configure VLAN 100 on your router. AWS has already assigned VLAN 382 to make the connection. So in this case, what the ECX switch will do, it'll just take VLAN 100, VLAN 382, and it'll translate as needed as it traverses the ECX switch. So VLAN, 3, uh, VLAN 100 hits the ECX switch, the, the ECX switch you know, pops off VLAN 100 and then pushes VLAN 382, and then it goes out on that side to the Z side of the connection for, for AWS. So, and then the reverse happens the same way. So the ECX switch's job is to take VLAN 100 and VLAN 382, do a mapping. So you build a layer two underlay, and then once the layer two underlay is built, you can build layer three peering across it. But, but that's the function of, of, the, of the ECX switch. You know, in, in this scenario, I'm gonna take, again, dot one Q, dot one Q, same framing type, but I'm gonna just change uh, a remap or, or uh, translate the VLAN ID, VLAN ID as needed to traverse the switch to, to build a layer two on the lane. So scenario two is I'm gonna have Q and Q to dot one Q. And the Q and Q is VLAN tunneling, the name for it, outer inner tag is what it uses. So, so I've got an, an outer tag 
and an inner tag. And say on, on this side, it's, it's dot one Q in this scenario as well. So I've got VLAN 410 on the dot one Q side. And on the Q and Q side, say the outer tag is 55 and the inner tag is uh, 1100. The ECX switch is going to see a Q and Q frame come in. It's going to strip off the outer tag, VLAN 55. Look at the inner tag, which is VLAN 100, and say, oh, I need to translate that VLAN 100 to VLAN 410. Same thing, same scenario. Once you've gotten to this point, it, it's basically like Q and Q, but it's got to process a Q and Q tag, so it's a different scenario because a customer wanted to do a Q and Q on the A side and ingress into the ECS, ECX switch. But that's how that, that looks. It's basically Q and Q, but I've got an outer tag that I have to deal with first, and it's the ECX switch of job, switches job to do that. Third scenario is this one in reverse. I've got dot one Q to Q and Q. In this scenario, the main one uh, on this side uh, is Azure. It's the way Azure does it. The other range of cloud providers are, are dot one Q on the Z side, but Azure does Q and Q. And I'll talk about in a second one of the reasons they do it. 